I started my channel LMC a little under three years ago with two missions. The first, to help educate the public and aspiring entrepreneurs. And the second, well, it's to preserve the stories and the culture so that future generations can understand what was happening during this time period in this new and emerging industry. Almost like an archive. A little over a year ago, I was texting Ivan, one of the founders of the Jungle Boys, and I was asking him who he thought I should cover next. Ivan didn't immediately give me any suggestions, but a week or two later, he hit me up and said one name. He said, you should do Fletcher from Archive. And I hadn't really heard of him, so I asked Ivan who he was. And Ivan responded saying, quote, he is one of the best breeders in the game, been around a long time, holds all the old school, real deal cuts, end quote. And so Ivan would introduce me to Fletcher via text and we would begin talking. Over the course of the next year, I would talk on and off with Fletcher and slowly learn more and more about him and the brand and the business that he was building and has been building. I also would start to learn more about Fletcher and Archive from many other folks in the industry. And I started to realize how truly impactful he has been in this industry. Many of the biggest growers and breeders all throughout the world have worked with Archive in some capacity due to the fact that Fletcher has preserved, and you could even say archived, some of the rarest and hardest to find flavors out there. Welcome to this High Design Quick Pack episode, where we're gonna tell the story of Fletcher and the Archive Company. Preserving history can be done on many different levels, and when it comes to the many different flavors of this plant, archival work is some of the most important types of preservation. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you're not, comment down below, and follow me on all the socials. Links are down below in the description. Welcome to this High Design QP. This is LMC. Let's run it. So this is a first for the High Design series, in that Fletcher is the first entrepreneur I've covered that is actually from my hometown of Seattle, Washington. But more on that later. So we need to start at the beginning. Fletcher was born in Virginia originally, but his parents would move to Seattle while Fletcher was still a very young child. Something that I think gave Fletcher an extreme advantage in general is that at a very young age, at the age of 15, Fletcher knew that he wanted to devote his life to growing and to this plant overall, which like I said, is a pretty big advantage. Anyone that knows the direction that they want to take their life in and sticks with it and they do that at a very young age, the chances of that person becoming almost like a savant at whatever they're pursuing is much, much more likely. And I would definitely call Fletcher a savant. He's someone that is insanely smart and truly understands this plant in and out. When Fletcher was 16, his mom took him on a trip to Amsterdam. While he was there, he would sneak off to one of the coffee shops there and buy seeds so he could take them home. He would smuggle back those seeds to the States and those were actually his first seeds he'd ever gotten. Later that year, when Fletcher was 16, his friend's mom would let him and his friend dig out the basement and start a grow. And this was actually Fletcher's very first grow. Around 2005, when Fletcher was 18, he would attend Western Washington University up in Bellingham, Washington, during which he would be growing so that he could pay for college. After two years, he would drop out of Western and focus mainly on growing. And also, side note, weirdly enough, it's kind of weirdly similar to my story because I actually went to Western Washington University myself for a few years and then dropped out to focus on working in the industry. But that was in 2019 when I dropped out whereas Fletcher dropped out around 2007, where the industry slash market was obviously extremely different. Growing was still extremely illegal. Now, for those of you who have watched my other high design episodes, I'm sure you have heard me mention on more than one occasion about the online forums like Overgrow, where growers from all around the world would discuss the best ways to grow and other things like that. Given that growing was still very illegal, everyone went by secret aliases and not the real names. Now Fletcher was very active on these different forums, learning himself, but also advising and teaching others how to better their grow. 
for years, Fletcher would only be known as the Doctor. Right, that was his alias. And in many ways, the name actually fits pretty well. See, Fletch would become an integral part of these online forum communities, helping others diagnose their problems with their grow and help them improve their craft overall. Fletcher would move to Colorado in 2010 for a year and a half where he would work with different breeders and growers. Most notably, he would work with people like Scott Reach, who is the founder of Rare Dankness. After that stint in Colorado, in around 2011 through 2012, Fletcher would move back to Seattle for a year, where he started the Archive brand. Later that year, he would move down to LA. So Fletcher realized he needed to go down to LA to make connections and to expand his brand slash business. While down in LA, he would have a couple smaller warehouse grows, totaling around anywhere from 45 to 50 lights, which at the time was pretty decently sized. One night while in LA, he went to an event thrown by Sean Cron. At the event, he would meet Ivan from the Jungle Boys. They would chop it up at the party, and Ivan would actually invite Fletcher to come and check out Ivan's business at the time, which was called Nature's Green Cure, a couple days later. So Fletcher would go and check out the 100 Light Grow in the back of the NGC building. By the way, if you haven't checked out the high design episode I did on Ivan and the Jungle Boys, I highly recommend you go check that out. But Fletcher and Ivan would become good friends. And he would also make friends with many others throughout LA. While also just building a solid network in general of people and businesses throughout the industry. Now, while Fletcher had learned a lot and made a lot of progress in California, he was starting to look up north, back towards the state of Washington and also Colorado. Because in 2012, Washington State and Colorado would legalize recreationally and the momentum of those two states legalizing would actually push Oregon in 2014 to legalize themselves. Now Fletcher was extremely smart in that he held off from really investing heavily into the newly legal Washington market, even though he was living in Seattle because he had just moved back from LA. And instead, he waited patiently, right? And when Oregon legalized, he would move the archive business down to Portland, where he would open up his first shop in the legal market there. Now, looking back at this move Fletcher made, well, it's incredibly smart. See, Fletcher understood early on that picking the right regulatory system to start your business is crucial. See, Washington State doesn't allow for vertical integration, whereas Oregon does. And for someone like Fletcher, who is extremely well-versed in not just growing, but business in general, he knew he wanted to have Archive operating in a vertically integrated state. I've said this in many different high design episodes, that you really need to be smart and calculated about which state you launch your brand in. Typically, I always say you either want to launch your brand in a massive market or in a market where the regulatory structure best suits you and your company's expertise slash skill set. And well, Oregon was perfect for Fletcher and Archive. In 2015, Archive would open up the very first store in Portland. Now this was still technically under the medical system, but in 2016, when Portland opened up, or Oregon opened up their markets, Archive would switch over to recreational. But in general, when Archive first opened up in Portland, this would mark the very first time in the entire country that a legal store would sell everything plant related from seeds, clones, flour, and everything else you could think of. And all of these products were for the most part completely done in-house by Archive. Now Fletcher obviously has been breeding flavors for more than a decade and a half, but let's cover some of the more famous flavors he's developed. So his first breeding project was the Malawi NL5, but Fletch would continue on and breed flavors like Face Off OG, Poison OG, Dosi Do, Rainbow Belts, Moonbow, Lemonheads, French Toast, Kirkwood OG, Valley Girl, Hazmat OG, Rocket Fuel, Rude Boy OG, Sour Face, Duct Tape, Lemon Cane, Planet Purple, Dolato, and Dark Rainbow. And one of the few official collabs he was a part of was when he helped 
for breakfast roll out the flavor he developed called the Sweeties. Now, this is just a small, short list of the flavors that Archive and Fletcher produced, because trust me, the list is very long. And that really just points to the fact that it can't be denied the impact that Archive has had on the entire industry and culture over the last 10 plus years. Now, as the legal industry has progressed over the years, Fletcher and the Archive brand have become major factors in this national and international market. Many of the top entrepreneurs and growers in the industry have worked with Fletch and Archive in some capacity. I, I have a lot of love for my hometown of Seattle, and I always want to shine a light on Seatown whenever I get the chance. But when it comes to this new emerging industry, well, there are very few folks from the industry that are coming up to Seattle or from around the country. See, no one in the industry really travels to Seattle from other places in the country because, well, there's not a whole lot of reason to, except to come up to Seattle and visit Fletcher. I mean, literally, I've talked to multiple entrepreneurs in this industry who have said the only reason why they have been to Seattle was because they came to visit Fletcher and Archive. I mean, look at the comments on this recent Instagram post Archive uploaded only a couple days ago on their Instagram. Like I said, right now on a national basis, there are very few reasons why folks from the industry around the country want to come to visit Seattle, but Fletcher, well, he's definitely one of them. Whether it's a breeder who built their line off of archives or it's a grower buying flavors for their own grow, it can't be denied the influence and impact that Fletcher and Archive have had on the entire industry. Like I've said in many different high design episodes, you need to understand what your unique value that you can provide people is so that it can help you move up in the industry and be successful. Through this unique value, leverage that into other business opportunities. Obviously, you're going to gravitate towards sectors of the industry that you are most passionate about. And well, for Fletcher, that was obviously his love for the different flavors and the lineage of this plant. Fletcher's unique value of having a wide variety of extremely rare flavors has allowed him to expand into new states like Michigan, as well as for establishing licensing deals in other states like, for example, in California, where Archive did a licensing deal with Connected and Alien Labs. One of the main reasons I wanted to do this high design quick pack episode on Fletcher and the Archive company is I think that we need to celebrate people and companies that look to preserve and archive the past and the present. This culture and community is so rich and we need to we need to have all sectors of the industry be looking to preserve, whether it be the flavors or the stories, we need to make sure that the future generations have the ability to understand what has happened and what is happening right now in this new industry and culture. One of the main reasons why I started this channel is to preserve and you could even say archive the stories and the people from this culture. Which is why I'm excited to announce that I'm actually going to be working with Fletcher and Archive on their YouTube channel to help continue the mission of preservation and archival work. We'll be announcing more information on that very soon, but go check out the Archive YouTube channel if you get the chance. I'll put a link down below in the description. In conclusion, Fletcher is someone who has really contributed so much to this industry and culture. His passion for growing and the preservation of rare flavors has helped him and Archive reach a massive amount of recognition, and deservedly so. Now, while I still think the general public may not be aware of Archive and Fletcher as much as they should, well, I think that's going to change coming here in the future. I'm extremely excited to see what's in store for Archive and Fletcher. I think the future, well, it's looking extremely bright. If you like this high design QP episode, please hit the like button, comment down below, share this and follow me on all the socials. The links are down below in the description. Big shouts out to Fletcher. Big shouts out to everyone at Archive. Y'all are amazing. Anyways, this is LMC signing out.